From the days before Henry Ford's 10 Lizzie, mass market cars have been made primarily of steel. It is relatively cheap, strong, durable, and easy to work with, but it's also heavy. If we all could afford Bugattis, then carbon fiber would be an easy answer. It's half the weight of steel and four times stronger, but at $15 per pound, it's more than three times the cost. Aluminum is another light but more expensive alternative to steel, and upscale brands like Audi, Jaguar, and Land Rover have pioneered its use in the mass market. But now Ford is jumping on the aluminum bandwagon with its highest volume vehicle, the F-150. The 2015 model pickup will tip the scale some 700 pounds lighter than before thanks to an all-aluminum body and bed. Like a diet for humans, there is no one-size-fits-all solution to vehicle light weighting. But at the Department of Energy's Oak Ridge National Lab near Knoxville, Tennessee, automakers, suppliers, and DOE researchers are co-developing the next generation of advanced materials and lightweight automotive components. This electric arc furnace allows the operator to melt small quantities of different metals together to create entirely new alloy compositions for study. Nearby, the 1,000 degrees Celsius furnace and roller mill test the workability of the new metals as they are made into thinner sheets. Along with the development of new metal compounds comes the need to join them together. Here, researchers are demonstrating a low temperature friction stir welder that could be used instead of rivets to join aluminum and steel together. Quality checking spot wells has always been a productivity killer on assembly lines. This automated infrared weld inspector can detect the heat signature of each weld as it is performed and determine if it's good or bad, then compensate with extra welds or adjust the welder settings on the fly. 70 years ago, scientists here were studying how to harness the energy in plutonium. But Oak Ridge is better known these days for studying the atomic structure of materials with the high flux isotope reactor. Its dense neutron beam path is split among 13 specialized instruments used to validate the molecular and magnetic structure of various materials. This machine is designed to look inside alloys and parts that have actually been manufactured by various processes to understand at the atomic level what the strains and stresses are within the material. Using ordinary acrylic fiber like that used to make socks or sweaters, the team at Oak Ridge's carbon fiber facility has created a carbon filament with much of the same properties as the pure material, but at a third of the cost. Winding repeatedly through four ovens, the white fiber is oxidized, then a blast in the 1,000 degree furnace vaporizes everything but the carbon. Nothing is cooler than seeing a part materialize before your eyes, and that's what additive or 3D printing is all about. Here, Oak Ridge scientists have used a plastic and carbon fiber composite to print large custom parts and even an entire go-kart chassis. More impressive, though, is the ability to create a complex moving gear and track assembly or a functioning mechanical hand in one build out of titanium. The downsizing of existing components is crucial for weight savings, too. Oak Ridge researchers have reconfigured an electric car power inverter to nearly half its former size and are developing new battery electrode materials that allow more energy stored per volume. So an EV could increase its driving range or shrink its battery size to save weight. Now we may not be 3D printing our own cars at home anytime soon, but with these advances in automotive materials engineering, Oak Ridge and the other DOE national laboratories are pointing us in the right light direction.